And so the overcast days here continue. Uh, I'm at a place called Wavecrest Park, I think, uh, in Half Moon Bay. And I'm thinking of painting this scene behind me. All right, so here's the scene. I'm hoping to create a feeling of depth in this painting. Um, there are the distant eucalyptus trees, the mountains, and then there are also some houses uh, in the distance as well. I've got my usual limited palette here, titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, burnt sienna, lizard crimson, ultramarine blue, and thalo blue green shade. I'm using liquid original for my medium. Odorless mineral spirits in a brush washer. I've got natural bristle flats here, a number eight and a number six. And I'm painting on a 12 by 16 inch gessoed panel. All right, so I think I want to put the horizon at about the one third uh, mark from the top of the panel. And then also I'll have these eucalyptus maybe come out about a third. Okay, the mountains go up like this. And then there are some trees also in the distance. Maybe I'll have the houses kind of in this area here, a suggestion of houses over here as well. All right, so there's a path leading off and I might want to have that kind of come like this. Maybe something like that. There's some variations in the color of the grass. Let's say over here, it's kind of a green color and then more yellow in other areas. I'm gonna to try to take advantage of those differences in color and value to maybe create some kind of interest because in this foreground, there's really not much going on. I like the idea of this trail or this path having some changes in it so it's not just direct, like a direct straight line. In the front here, I could add some grass and I'll do the same maybe over here as well. Kind of like what I did in the painting out at uh, McNee Ranch. And there's maybe a few little dark patches of bushes out here. Okay, so there we are. The main problem I'm having with it at this point is I don't really see a defined pattern in here. It looks sort of chaotic, but um, I think I can work with that once I start applying color. All right, so starting with my darkest darks, I've got ultramarine blue, um, burnt sienna, and some cadmium yellow medium. I've also added a bit of alizarin crimson in here to uh, add a bit of red to the mix. And I try to keep these strokes um, pretty spontaneous, if, uh, if at all possible. And I'm just squinting at the trees in the distance and looking for uh, the darkest darks. Using my number eight brush, gonna try to use this all the way through the painting if possible. I don't think it'll be a problem. I think it should be okay. Already thinking about leaving sky holes in these trees. So suggesting like a few trunks you can see up close, it's very random and spontaneous. And some of these areas I'll kind of reinforce with a different direction of brush stroke. All right, bringing in some cadmium yellow medium. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here, try to leave uh, some sky holes. What I'm mostly looking for is interesting shapes. Uh, so, there we go. All right, so for the sky, I've got titanium white and ultramarine blue, and I've used a bit of this burnt sienna to gray down the blue a bit. As I've mentioned, I like to gray down my colors using complements. Uh, that's why I add alizarin to my greens quite often, and then also um, burnt sienna to the blues, since the burnt sienna is kind of an orange color. It does a nice job of graying down the blues. Um, I do want to keep this color a little bit more saturated than I'm seeing in real life, just because I want to use the, the blue of these mountains for atmospheric perspective to push the mountains back, filling in some of the sky holes. All right, so I pulled some titanium white into my mountain mixture here, and I've added also a touch of uh, this alizarin crimson. 
even though the sky is gray, it does have a feeling of warmth to it. Sometimes I'll warm things up with yellow, but other times I'll warm things up with red, uh, like alizarin. Even though alizarin is a cool red, meaning it leans towards purple. So I'm paying attention to the value difference between the sky and these distant hills here. And I do want the edge to be pretty soft because there's a lot of fog out there. All right, for the green portion of the grass, I've got a mixture of ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, cadmium yellow medium, and a touch of alizarin crimson. Uh, I've brought in the phthalo blue because I want this um, green to be a little bit more blue-green or leaning in that direction. All right, I want to make an interesting shape with this green uh, grass here. So I know that I, I know I want it to come all the way to the foreground, but I want the shape to be somewhat unified. And maybe there'll be bits of that green along the trail as well. You could have some bits of isolated green like there too. I'm not trying to copy what I'm seeing because I'm not really seeing, you know, a pattern that I like necessarily in nature. So I'm using nature as inspiration, but I'm trying to uh, create an interesting design. I'm actually squinting when I'm scrubbing this in and just focusing on the shapes. All right, so there are bits of green in the trail, but then over here there's more green. There's some green at the base of some of the grass here. Something like that. Okay, I'm gonna bring the grass down a bit over here. All right, so I've mixed up a yellow color for the grass here using cadmium yellow medium, some burnt sienna, and some ultramarine blue. It's interesting, as this yellow color comes more towards the foreground, it actually has more red in it. So I'm just going to stick with these distant yellows. And I'm actually getting a bit of sun, which is unexpected. So I may have to move my panel so that the panel is not directly in the sunlight. It's really hard to judge colors and values when you've got direct light onto your panel. So I've mixed in some alizarin crimson and a touch of burnt sienna for the grass that's in the foreground. All right, I think I want some of this dark color or darker color down at the bottom as well. Maybe like that. All right, so as usual, I'm walking back every 30 seconds or every minute uh, and just kind of seeing how this thing is developing. I'm always keeping the composition in mind. The composition is the most important thing. Dragging some of this phthalo uh, blue into the mixture. So I am thinning quite a bit with liquid so that I can get these uh, fluid brush strokes. Now that's kind of a preference thing. I like to see uh, brushwork and I like areas of transparency. So like as you can see right here, I like that sort of thing. So I'm going to try to preserve some of that in the final painting. All right, introducing some ultramarine to the mix. I'm going to start defining the trail here. And I'm noticing there are some darker areas of gray. This paint is actually a little bit thicker. So I've thinned it less with uh, the liquid. And I want to create a feeling of motion or direction here, but I don't want it to be too obvious. So there's a combination of things going on here. There's the lighter portion of the trail, but then there are also these brush strokes that are directional, that are creating a little bit of energy in this direction. So mixing in some titanium white and a touch of alizarin crimson. I want there to be a little bit of red in the trail, in the lighter portions of the trail. I'm still working with this number eight. At this point in the painting, I usually try to slow down a little bit and try to be more intentional with my brushwork. 
uh, keeping the brush loaded. I may end up leaving some of the white of the panel showing through. We'll see. Okay, so design-wise, I feel like maybe I want to put some light color over here. Maybe like that. I'm still mixing in the same area here. I've just brought in some ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna. I'm seeing little bits of dark along the trail back here, so I want to create a little bit of definition. There's also some in the foreground as well. All right, I want to reintroduce some light out on the trail here. And I want to make it so that it's not just a straight line. Maybe like that. I don't mind if I leave this painting underworked. I think it's good to do that sometimes. Anyone can overwork a painting. Underworking a painting is a challenge. <laughs> Try to do it sometime and you'll see what I mean. I think most paintings end up overworked, so it can be a fun challenge to give yourself an assignment to go out and underwork a painting. Bring it home, put it in a frame, and see what you think. It depends on what you're after. I mean, some people like more detail and more control, but the painters or the paintings that inspire me are ones that seems seem as though they were dashed off and have a lot of energy in them and spontaneity. I right, experiment with some grass along the trail and keeping the value um, pretty light so there's not a lot of contrast. That way it's subtle, it doesn't draw the eye, but if you're staring at the painting for a while then you'll see maybe those little accents. All right, adding a bit of movement and energy in here. And then balance it out by adding some of that color over here as well. I want to be sure to leave some of the transparency in the dark portions at the base of the trees. So I'm leaving areas like this, but then areas that are kind of light, I'm going over with a new dark mixture. These sky holes here are obviously too big. I found that by forcing myself to use a larger brush, I've come up with solutions uh, that look more satisfactory to me anyway. These trees need to be darker. There's some uh, titanium white mixing in, but I don't mind that because it's actually helping to lighten up the value and push the trees back. I feel like I want a little bit more definition and contrast maybe on these trees right here. And there are bits of, there's bits of light out in the darker areas as well. And I'm always careful to keep the value shifts delicate enough that it doesn't break up the overall shape. All right, I have titanium white and ultramarine blue here to suggest some of these distant houses. And there's maybe a, there's like some over here too. There's some bigger ones like right in here. All right, so here's what I finished up with. I did manage to paint these houses using the number eight natural bristle flat. At first, I tried to paint them the colors that I saw them, which were sort of a uh, brick color, uh, but I decided that I wanted uh, to paint them white or a light value just uh, to draw the eye more. When, when they were orange, they kind of uh, disappeared a bit. They weren't as prominent as I wanted them to be. I wanted there to be some interest here at the end of the trail to draw the eye. Other things, as I mentioned, I wanted to keep this painting loose and sketchy and maintain some of the transparency, especially in the strokes in the fields here. Um, it's difficult to do that. You know, you want to paint over everything, but I resisted that urge and I'm glad I did. I do like 
the uh, brushy effects in here. And um, I did lose the transparency in these trees over here, just trying to get the right color and value, but was able to maintain some over here. You know, we're getting a lot of these foggy days. It's not very inspiring. <laughs> There's no light and shadow to work with, but it's a, good, uh, it's a good exercise in trying to make something decent under challenging conditions. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's the Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos and it's much appreciated, so check it out. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video.